wouldn't want to do a whole episode about tomatoes. They are sweet, they're tart, they're juicy, they're meaty. Everything can use a little tomato. It definitely needs a whole episode, if not two, of Cook Like a Chef. Chef would like you to make the chimichurri. Just make sure there's not a lot of stems. Are you ready? Tomatoes, when in season, my favorite fruit to use. They're so versatile. I can use them on recipes, from desserts to main courses. They have different kinds of flesh, different volumes of water. They're sweeter. In Argentina, tomatoes grow wild. And in my backyard, I have so many varieties. They go from ruby red colors to emerald greens. They're sweet, they're tart, they're fleshy. They peel so fast like this. Now, tomatoes are fruits. Fruits are known to produce sweet juices. My favorite concoction when it comes to tomatoes, it's actually tomato water. The weight, super important, especially when making something like tomato water. The heavier they are, the more water they hold. Tomatoes best friend, basil. And hint of garlic. Cheesecloth is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. Originally made to strain cheese, it works as a perfect fine strainer when I want really clear liquids. Just make sure to put the tomato powder afterwards. Okay, okay yes, sure. Look at that. Gravity has done its work. I have lots of pulps and skin here to work with later. Thank you. Now, this dish calls for tomato in so many forms. A great way of adding tomatoes is by doing a traditional classic concasse. Briny, sweet, so much tomato, hint of garlic, some basil, perfect. The secret here is to get the shrimps to chill. Cold will make all the flavors crisp up. Now, I'm Argentinian and grilled seafood calls for chimichurri. Try this. Can't wait. Never had tomato concasse. So amazing. Cooking is my whole life. Definitely been not easy at the beginning, but I shape everything around cooking, and I could not imagine doing anything else.
tomatoes, when in season, are the perfect topping to a flaky tart. I want to make sure all the slices are around the same thickness. I want them all to cook around the same time. My favorite herbs are a mix that I made my own of herbs de Provence. In mine, always lavender, a hint of garlic, and my favorite garden herbs, rosemary, thyme, some fresh parsley. I always give it a nice blitz before I add the olive oil. Perfect. Nice toss. Now, for juicy tomatoes, I need a flaky dough. I have the best recipe. The secret, cold butter. Butter is incorporated. Now I need a little extra moisture with cold ice water. There's two things about dough. One, flour contains gluten, and gluten is a protein that stiffens the dough out. Second, the heat of my hands cannot transfer to the dough because it will actually melt the butter. Then it won't make the steam in the oven to make those flaky flakes. Frozen grated butter. I'm only gonna work it in for a few seconds. You can actually see parts of the butter on the dough. That will steam in the oven, making this the flakiest dough for my tomatoes. How's that going? It's good, just about ready for blind baking. Blind baking. Now, you can actually get commercial ceramics but I like using the beans in the kitchen. Baking blind. I can't see what's going on, so I need to trust the oven. After it comes out, after a few minutes, I can unveil. The bottom stays put because of the weight of the beans, and the sides have started to cook. How are we coming on that, Chloe? Okay, just leave this one whole for me. Yes, chef. I'm just getting rid of the beans. I will be using them for another pie. Now, blind baking helps with keeping the dough flaked, and that way, the water of the tomatoes will actually not soak in. A second tip is using loads and loads of Dijon mustard. Lots and lots of cheese. And for an extra crispy touch and more salty and savory taste, loads of Parmesan. Wait until it comes out of the oven. Look at that crust, perfect. Mm. Guys, rub some forks. The best way of learning is by trying. There's so many things happening when I bite into that tart. 
the softness and the richness of the tomatoes and a kick of the Dijon. I made one of those starts and I probably won't eat anything else, nothing else. Good. Just remember the popcorn. Nice and thin. Yes, chef. Good. Tomatoes, so many ways of working with them. Drying, one of my favorites. Why? Because drying intensifies flavor. Plum tomatoes or Roma tomatoes are fleshy, but less fruity. They're ideal for sauces. I want to get to the point of leathery skins and almost with a dry bite, locking all the sugars in and all the tomato flavor. No pulp, just the flesh. For flavor, natural herbs, but all on the bottom of the rack. Cherry tomatoes, they're so sweet, almost like grapes. I want to intensify that flavor by slow roasting them, drying them a bit, caramelizing all those sugars. Can I see those? Definitely, chef. I love the combination of garlic, fresh herbs, and tomatoes, but garlic needs to be very thin, subtle. I can almost see through it. Thyme is one of my favorite herbs, a perfect touch. I love tomato so much that I can't waste any of it. This is the leftover pulp and skin from the tomato water. And silk pad or a parchment paper will help me with the process of drying this tomato paste and this tomato pulp. Now, before I turn this into magic powder, I need to let it cool down. Look at this. It's like a million atoms of tomato went into this powder. It goes on everything. Fish, on seafood, on grilled steak, on burgers. Top some popcorn, that is the best movie night you ever had. Great. It's not too much goat cheese? No, it's perfect. Okay, it's never great. too much goat cheese. Beautiful. Thanks, chef. You're welcome. Mmm. Right? Definitely needs the powder. Guys, you should definitely try this. Now, a great tip to keep tomatoes all year round is during peak season to dry to leathery skins and preserve them in jars full herbs, seasoning, and lots and lots of olive oil. The olive oil will prevent the air to touch it and will allow your tomatoes to stay nice and full of flavor. I'm 
And that's the key. Tomatoes all year round. Tomato powder is like a concentration of tomato flavor with a dash of acidity. It's essentially the most concentrated taste of tomato that you've ever tried. To just sprinkle on anything is just absolutely amazing. One thing I will never buy in the winter are watermelons and tomatoes. So in summer and in season, I try to use it as much as possible. I love the way they work together. This combination is great on salads and cold soups, but my favorite use is for granite. After all, tomato, it's a fruit. Perfect. Just like I did with the tomato water, I'm gonna strain this. I'm gonna push through it. I want pulp, I want color, I want lots and lots of texture. My tip here is to always use a shallow pan. I wanna make sure that it freezes quick. I need to go back at it a few times. Last, a touch of mint, some freshness. Now, it's more like a slushy right now. What I want is a snow cone texture. So in between freezing, I stop and I break it down. Hey. Perfect. It's like a snow cone. All the crystals are broken down. So refreshing. Mm. My favorite hour has arrived. Cocktail time. It's been a tomato celebration, and what better way to celebrate than with the tomato water I made earlier turned into my favorite cocktail, a Caesar. Canada is the home of the Caesar. It's basically clam juice, a tomato water that I made earlier, and lots and lots of spices. I love horseradish. Spice it all up, some hot sauce and Worcestershire. And to finish it off, vodka. I like stirring my drinks and not shaking them. When you shake them, they get cloudy.
for extra punch, la tomato powder. Can't imagine a better way to celebrate tomatoes. Guys, kitchen's close. <sighs> All right. Let's right. celebrate. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Chef. What a hey. great day, huh? Yeah, thanks. When I was young, my inspiration in the kitchen was my mom. She always made it fun. You could see she was not following a recipe. She was just following her heart. And I just aspire to be as passionate and as compromised in the kitchen as my mom. 